Hello, I welcome you to a discussion on the topic community medicine and religion. At the very beginning, it is very important to discuss the various sections which this module encompasses. This article has been differentiated into four segments along with an introductory portion in order to analyze the profound connection between community medicine and religion. In the first section, we will discuss about different theoretical and philosophical outlooks linked to community medicine and religion. The second section deals with the association between ecology, environment and community medicine with special focus on the aging process. Proceeding further, in the third section, we will analyze different psychological works related to religion and community medicine. In the fourth section, effort will be made to study community medicine and religion from the viewpoint of the feminists. Finally, conclusive remarks will be added in order to summarize this module. The common sense point of view towards the understanding of religion is logical and positivist which can be usually called scientific. However, on deliberate observation one can find deep links between community medicine and religions of varied regions. In this module we have tried to study the connection between religion and community medicine with an approach which would permit for both a wider range and a self-reflective attitude necessary for a holistic insight of sociology. In this segment, we will mainly discuss the basic advanced theoretical and philosophical ideas in connection to community medicine and religion. We have tried to examine the works of different theoreticians in this context. Ethnicity is among one of the many aspects which focuses on the context of ecology, environment and community medicine. Therefore, it is logical to start from it. In this regard, Giddens has mentioned that some scholars have adopted to cultural and behavioral accounts. As a result, there is an increase on the individual and collective life forms and center of attention leading to decline in health, which may be either the impact of religious and cultural beliefs related to dietary and culinary practices or a consequence of consanguous marriages. The structural imbalances faced by ethnic groups in the healthcare system have not been registered. According to Giddens, the African, Caribbean and Asians are more exposed to drawbacks that can be rather dangerous, ranging from poor living situations, unemployment or uncontrolled occupational hazards. These are mostly the outcome of direct or institutionalized cruelty in the form of racism. It is important to develop a theory of sociology of the body before starting a venture which seeks to discover ecology, environment and community medicine. Such theoretical knowledge is needed as the whole idea of medicine revolves around the notion of human body. This study would remain basically inadequate without the conceptualization of theories. In this context, Turner has given interesting points of view. Turner feels that in the present day, there has been considerable amount of sociological theory 
which has been positively affected by postulates of feminism. Apart from feminism, it has also been affected by the areas of cultural anthropology and postmodern ideas. As an outcome, sociologists are concerned to understand how that which we tend to take for granted as natural in the human body is in fact mostly, if not totally, a social formation or a social fact. As Peter Morrell points out, the structural pattern of sociology claims that human beings belong to particular social groups and their behavioral presentation is to a great degree fixed by their membership in those groups. As a result, the degree of human performances is determined by social divisions, institutions and society. There are different social institutions with different methods such as those caring for diseases, criminal justice, commerce, education, leisure, travel, media and family. Morrell has also pointed that the theorizing patterns of the structuralists have been successful in penetrating into several domains at both the levels, global and local disease care policies. Most of the national and international organizations like the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the World Bank and the government of various countries concomitantly concern that edu diseases can only be minimized through structural changes. This fact holds true in regard to particular cultures as well as the global society. This segment focuses on the concept of gerontology which is an upcoming area of study in the field of medical sociology. It has its root derived in the Greek word geron which means old man and logia which means study of. Gerontology is thus the study of socio-psychological, cognitive and biological dimensions of aging. However, it is different from geriatrics an area of medicine which comprises of the treatment of existing diseases among the older people. The group of gerontologists includes researchers and practitioners from varied fields such as biology, medicine, nursing, criminology, dentistry, social work, physical or occupational therapy, psychology, psychiatry, sociology, economics, political science, anthropology, architecture, geography, public health and pharmacy. The field of gerontology includes the analysis of the physical, mental and social conditions of old aged people. It examines the biological processes of aging itself. It focuses on the social and psychological influences on aging. It attempts to investigate the impact of an aging population on the society. It applies the information gained by such investigations to macro and micro level policies and programs. Gerontology lays emphasis on the aged and the aged population with increasing degree of infertility, hardships of the increasing aged population and the problem of adequate supply of caregivers. This issue is needed very relevant to this module as well as other branches of the study including both natural and social. In fact, the problem of giving care to the elderly is one of the most significant fields for research in the present day world. The conditions of the caregivers cannot be denied an important place in the society and economy in terms of the labor involved. Research by Shara Lambs shows that Hindu way of living has a deep connection with the ecology and the environment. Hindu lifestyle is based on four age-based life stages or ashramas. 
these are known as brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha and sanyasha the stage of brahmacharya is marked by the bachelor student phase of life where education and practice of celibacy is emphasized grihastha stage symbolizes the married life of an individual characterized by maintaining a household raising a family procreation of children and leading a family oriented social life vanaprastha is the transitional phase characterized by retirement giving over of household responsibilities to the next generation and withdrawing oneself from material world sanyasa is the stage of renunciation emphasizing spiritual development therefore as one becomes old there is stress on spiritual awareness and god at the final stage of life according to the hindu way of living one is expected to live in the forests and detach oneself from the worldly matters by practicing yoga meditation and spirituality this has become more apparent from the field analysis conducted by lamp on the life of the people of mangaldehi where people are profoundly connected to their soil and motherland here in the early years of one's life that is during grihastha stage stress is laid on marriage reproduction and material accomplishment while towards the final stage of life that is vanaprastha spirituality is emphasized upon Roemer has pointed out that according to the assertions of activity theory individuals with increase in their age voluntarily and with complete willingness try to keep themselves active both in mind and in body so that they can overcome the hardships of the mind the body and the society Roemer has further stated that in american society the people who are growing old who have kept themselves occupied and are religious from within experience lower degrees and levels of anxiety or depression in comparison to those who do not follow the same way of lifestyle such active elderly also experience lesser degree of anxiety according to remar this same logic is applicable for the aging population in japan as there a healthy aged person is one who is able to look after himself by engaging within the community as well as staying active both physically and mentally this segment precedes the following section where the psychological factors related to ecology environment and community medicine play a dominant role in this section distinct methods have been examined by which people belonging to different areas of the world adapt themselves with their communities their medicine health environment and the ecology and as they start growing old a study carried out by picket on the aged population the anxieties experienced by them and the way to handle the stress shows that stress was mainly the result of loss or conflict a substantial inclination was found towards the use of inventive approaches such as prayers consoling oneself with the belief that things could have been worse thereby maintaining satisfaction and dignity rather than an inclination in the direction of criticizing oneself escaping and displacement according to piquet the curricula chalked out for the community health nurses should include particular courses which would enable them to handle or assess the aged population in order to cope up with various situations that lead the way to stress in their daily lives because of different factors as an outcome of their way of living piquet also maintains that in a society where there is a rise in the number of aged and older people courses should be such which allow the community health nurses for their respective societal roles 
and help them in cultivating a much improved and better understanding with stress on the aging process. The experience of loss, conflict resolution, different kinds of isolation and loneliness. In this section, we have tried to examine various types of mental ailments and psychological disorders which are frequently managed by different social institutions like religion and other community facilities. The purpose of community medicine is mainly limited to primordial herbal forms of medicine. This segment will take you beyond the materialist foundation and enter the sphere of psychological diseases. Mental health care and its connection with religion and community medicine. For instance, Paul Corner has written about the detailed communicative claims made by Donald Capps in the context of various kinds of difficulties related with certain theories in the realm of psychology which have become progressively dominant. Caps has also claimed for the particular need of certain portion of the psychology of religion which is seen to have importance and relevance to pastoral counselling. Same kind of spirit can be seen in the difference of opinions recorded in this circumstance. Various kinds of assessments that have been made eventually make the debate on the connections between the realms of religion and psychopathology the center of attention. These are in the same line with the judgments which have gained a large degree of importance. Stress is laid on schizophrenia, a kind of mental disorder which multiplies the pain and discomfort of a patient. It is characterized by unusual social behavior and inability to realize what is actual. Vague thinking, invalid beliefs, auditory illusions, decreased social involvement, emotional feelings and lethargy are some of its typical indicators. The signs of this disorder can result in mental or emotional problems for the patient. Identification of this disorder involves careful noting of the patient's attitude and his or her descriptive encounter. Genetics, early surroundings, social and psychological processes are significant factors which lead to schizophrenia. Sometimes certain medicines may cause or worsen the signs of the disorder. Indicators of this illness may start in early adulthood. Besides influencing the thinking process, it also results in persistent difficulties in emotions and attitudes of the sufferer. Schizophrenia affects 0.3 to 0.7 percent at some point in their life. Such patients are characterized by high degree of pessimism, negativity, worry, disorganizations coupled with social problems like long spans of unemployment, economic deprivation and homelessness. Antipsychotic medication, counseling, social rehabilitation, training on the job and in extreme cases involuntary hospitalization are some methods of treating schizophrenia. As seen, individuals who have been detected with schizophrenia have made themselves used to various relaxation methods. An individual's faith in religion and spirituality play a crucial role in the coping up techniques of such disorders. This kind of trust also gives community-based support in sight of meaning 
in the middle of major pains and confusions. Religiousness helps one to cultivate a practical point of view of the world. It makes an individual more self-assured and cheerful. The holy texts provided by religion and spirituality serve as ideal for those in pain by making their sufferings more acceptable. These texts give an insight of direct authority over the individual's afflicted condition. This also decreases the sense of being alone by significant help from the community. Like most of the scholastic ventures, it is important to understand community medicine and religion from the viewpoint of the feminists. The study utilized in this module shows a high degree of gynecological problems faced by married women in the age group of 16 to 22 years. These problems comprise urinary tract infections, uterine prolapse and primary infertility. Most of the women accept such signs to be common which prevents them from taking medical help. However, such instances are more common among the women having a low social status in their spouse's family or society. Jacob has made recommendations for both men and women in the countryside in particular for the young woman. There is necessity for particular and absolutely precise health education initiatives linked to gynecology and reproduction. This will lessen disgrace and other forms of discomforts. It will result in betterment of health amenities by making them more reachable. This will help in solving various purposes proving beneficial for the woman. There may be instances where the woman may find it easier to, if situations arise, take medical care. This would ensure that women are not being stopped by any kind of issues connected to seclusion or secrecy. A little citation from the Community Health and Development or CHAD program helps us to gaining a better and comprehensive insight of this situation. CHAD program has proved to be important at various levels for the elevation of women's position, particularly in the rural sectors. This program tries to make it certain to give reproductive health education not only to school students at the secondary level, school dropouts or those unwilling to attend schools, but even to the married couples and youths in the age group of 14 to 22 years. In fact, this has become obligatory for the health employees working in the Chad hospitals and related clinics to collect information or meet married women on a daily basis to know whether they are experiencing or suffering from RTI symptoms. This operation has led to massive social boost up of women folk in varied ways. There has been advancement of treatment levels to significant extent. However, Jacob has brought into notice the idea that it is not necessary for evolution to always be a positive as it might seem to be. She has shown how community health programs has shifted their attention from pure health engagements in order to incorporate growth asserting that such growth will result in significant improvement in health in comparison to medical action only. Similar rationale has been applied to the issues relating to women, making women's education and employment the key features of Chad's pursuits. However, 
In spite of years of concentrated efforts towards well-being, education and employment of the women, their health index has not shown the desired outcome. Thus, after discussing the entire module, we can conclude that this paper seeks to discover the process of analyzing the connection between religion and community medicine. An endeavor has been made to come out of the usual idea associated with medicine as somewhat related to the intake of some tonic or a pill. Light has been shed upon the mental forms of illness, health care and medicine along with its complex association to religion and community medicine. Religion and spirituality occupy an important place in the lives of the patients. It is often seen that when patients and their lives are endangered by some disease, they seek medical treatment from the doctors with both physical signs of disease as well as spiritual values in their mind. Researchers show that there exists a deep relationship between medicine and religion. Human beings always search for aspiration, sense and individual worth in the midst of pain, fribbleness, isolation and demise. An examination of the patients of Duke University Medical Center shows that for a majority of the patients, religion is a crucial factor to carry on their lives. Faith in religion and religious habits act as strong sources of comfort, aspirations and give meaning to life. It reduces stress, makes recovery faster, lowers the rates of suicide, provides good health, satisfaction and stability in life of the sufferer. Thank you.